So welcome back to another YouTube analysis video. Today's episode is based on PFG, Provenant Financial PLC. So this company has had numerous problems within the past year, especially with their home credit business. So I'll explain first of all, this company is a subprime lender business. They own Vanquist Bank. They own also, I think it's Money Barn, that realized a profit before tax of 16 million. I think Vanquist, I can't quite remember, but I'll get that in a bit. Um, but there are some problems with PFG currently, and PFG has one major problem that they're struggling to reorganize their door-to-door -door subprime lending business. And just to clear the air, a subprime lending business that is door-to-door -door is the same as the home credit business in which they state in their RNSs. So they warned also in June that their profit would fall as they struggled to switch from using self-employed debt collection agents to employees on its payroll. So basically, these are the people who say to you, I'll give you one pound on loan and I want, say, one pound 20 back, could go anywhere up to one pound 80. It depends. They're on the Financial Conduct Authority investigation, and uh, funnily enough, their CEO has just departed today. Voluntarily, I believe, maybe. Maybe not voluntarily, we can't tell. But he stepped down with immediate effect. And it's kind of like a quadruple whammy to say that their fall has caved so violently. And I mean, this isn't the only fall that this year has seen. They fell 50% just before this, I think. About a month ago, maybe more. Three months ago. About that time. Shows towards here somewhere there we go about 50 percent 40 percent to to say the least maybe full price drop hasn't shown here but from highs the share price fallen about 80 something percent which is crazy for such a large FTSE 100 company yet the FTSE today is unfazed by this drop so to go back to what i was talking about the quadruple whammy effect the profit warning the dividend being scrapped, the Financial Conduct Authority and the CEO's supposedly apparent uh, random departure leads us to kind of believe that the shares are not investable until greater clarity is received. That was said by RBC Capital's analysts. Um, the stock has also lost over eight tenths of its share price from its highs to date right now. And... Um, Funnily enough, the short positions have built quite significantly. I think the net short currently is approximately 7.7%. And uh, there also is a long position that was building with uh, um, the fund, the Woodford Fund by Neil Woodford. It's disappointing to see him losing, but you know, you don't win. And I mean, you don't win all the time, but his fund's doing well enough to incur this kind of a loss. But you know, you can build your position, you can average down. Sometimes financial conduct authority investigations come and go. And when they're finished with, the share price recovers. Because, you know, in some funds, they have policies where when companies are under investigation by the financial conduct authority, they cannot have long positions. Sometimes not even short positions. Sometimes they just don't want to touch the share. You know, in case of a suspension, I mean, there's really no secondary market to flip it on on a FTSE 100 stock once they suspend. These guys won't suspend, that's for sure. But they are having some short term issues. The current market cap is 800 million approximately. Don't uh, follow that figure up there on Google Finance. It's incorrect. Um, also, the most powerful hedge funds have also built up significant short positions in this company, which is... Very interesting because it is the top FTSE faller and it's been the top FTSE faller for, you know, quite a numerous amount of days in the past year. And as you can see on the chart, it's not really had good recoveries. Maybe May, April time was strong for it. Subprime lending business was strong during that time. But people... Either, there's, there's quite a few ways to say, why isn't this working? First of all, potentially poor management um, and potentially P 
People aren't borrowing as much money as they were previously. Subprime lending is different. The majority of people borrowing money is for mortgages because, um, well, you could have payday loans, you could have stuff like this. But credit cards, they have a huge history, these credit card companies or subprime lending companies, for charging you way above what the government would view or the regulation authorities would view as acceptable. And this company in particular is under investigation for, I believe, Sales between 2014 and 2016, I don't know the exact months, but in between those two years, apparently they'd charged a lot of people. Now, I know a lot of people who actually have used Provident Financial and have always complained about the outrageous rates in which they're being charged. You know, they come door to door, they accept the money from you that you have to pay back weekly, but um, usually they target pensioners. So, you know, they tell them, we'll lend you this much money, kind of like a credit card, we come collect it at the end of the month when you get your state pension or you get your personal pension or any kind of money that's coming in for you on a stable basis. So these guys also earn Money Barn, which some claim to be a financial printing machine uh, as its margins are quite good. Um, they also own Vanquist Bank, which many must know. By now, many must have gotten letters through the mail just saying, Sign up to this credit card. You could get this amount of uh, a loan on a low repayment plan. Well, the problem is the Financial Conduct Authority doesn't agree. They think the rates these guys are charging are outrageous, potentially. There is no proof currently now, but the investigation is ongoing. No fine, as far as I'm aware, has been implemented. Yet the share price has fallen 83%. It's a FTSE 100 stock. You don't really see that. You start to question, are you on the AIM market or are you still on the FTSE 100, you know? When I'd woken up to see the uh, news in the fall, I thought, am I still in a dream? Many may have thought so similarly and many must have traded also because it is hard to catch the bottom in these kind of companies. But sometimes you think asset value of this company is £2.8 billion. The market cap, uh, sorry, that's the net asset value of 2.8 billion pounds and the market cap is 800 million. Some could lead themselves to thinking, is this oversold? Is this undervalued? I would say it is potentially undervalued, but when you have a financial conduct authority investigation, it's short attack territory and it's very hard to profit unless shorters decide to close because I mean, the magnitude of the profit in which the shorters will have made by now is quite abnormal quite enormous actually because they would have shorted all the way from the 3,000 pence a share to the thousands of pence a share to the hundreds which is currently now uh, at 589 was the UT auction close so there there is a lot of confusion right now on what the correct idea is to approach this stock right now many would call it a falling knife but of course, the company has put a strategic investigation into changing their uh, operations recently. Didn't work out for the best. They struggled slightly to reorganize that subprime lending business. You know, the door to door one, the home credit business, as they state. Um, now, analysts also see a problem with covenants and the FCA probe. You know, the, the investigation is a major drag. And when you have debt, that's a huge risk as well because impairments will hit you badly, especially when you're in potential breach of covenants. So the CEO, Peter Crook, uh, no pun in the name, is leaving after issuing its second profit warning in many months. So this isn't the first. This is the first of many. So you can't really say that the it will change because the general consensus on the last profit warning was all the pain is over now it's just gotten worse it's at its 22 year low and this is the worst day ever for the share i mean how could you see four four bad events coming in one day or in a short period of time an fca probe a shelf dividend a profit warning and the CEO's resignation. Coincidental? I don't know. For me, it's a trade. That's all I can say. Anyways, best of luck to anybody.
trading this or shorting this or, or going long on this. I hope you all make the right decisions and value both sides of the argument. Anyways, right now.